Hi there, I'm Jan. These tutorials are my legacy in this life. It is my sincere hope that they can pass on my teaching and painting to wherever you are in your art life as well as in the world. You can watch each slide and listen to my voice as if I'm talking to you while I'm doing a painting demo, step by step. In this one, and I'm probably going to ignore both of them, and obviously did, because if you look to the right on the the uh, example on the right, you can see that you can't even tell where those blossoms are. It doesn't take much to hide something. And it's usually done by a well-placed dark or emphasizing a shape. And that's what I did. I didn't emphasize all the shapes because remember, I don't want to paint the, this painting leaf by leaf. I, I love at this point to kind of get abstract and just look for the shapes that are there. Fall in love with a shape like the coconut. That, so I'm, I'm really enjoying the process, adding some more um, shapes up in the very top upper left and it looks almost finished as far as I'm concerned uh, somebody while I was painting this one of my students said Jen are you aware it looks like uh, the palm frond on the lower left almost looks like it's water flowing and I looked at it and said you're right it looks like water and suddenly, you know, we all looked at each other. I said, I don't see that as anything, any, as a problem. If the painting wants to suggest it's water, I'm not going to step in the way. I kind of like it. Uh, I could change the name, but I'm not going to concentrate and build up those areas. So I went into the tree root and built up more of the glow, taking on that reflected light area, taking care not to cover it up but I can add in just a touch darker to create a core shadow. Uh, I can do another layer over the main trunk. I can start to add in just a little bit of detail that I see. I don't see it in the photograph. I see it in the underwash. And that's what I'm paying attention to. And this is so important. In these stages, respect respect what's already been put down. It just works so much better if you do that. It's like the painting wants to help. It really does. And it gives you the directions and all you have to do. Rather like that. Uh, anyone looking at that painting or the photograph would probably not see all the color that I saw. But I'm exaggerating. I'm exaggerating from what light actually does. So, what things could I have done better? Uh, or, in an informational tutorial, as if I'm talking to you about some of the things I know. Now, look at the area in shade. That is the part of the object that is turned completely away from the sun. That is said to be shade and it's within that shaded area that you can most likely see the effects of reflected light let's understand reflected light imagine that sun beam look at this photograph of shade and reflected light here again echo amphitheater a natural rock amphitheater so I had this backlighted iris in my garden and one morning I saw it like this glowing and thought how do I paint it? And this is how I did it. I basically used a single one layer of transparent paint over the whole flower. Everything and I mixed it with a rose matter genuine and cobalt blue I'm pretty sure making a lavender one layer then after that was completely dry I could go back in and add more layers of those very transparent paints in the shapes that I want I don't know what she was trying to say 
in this painting, but the mystery and the surprise of it and the light sources in it carry it into another dimension for me. And I really like that. So I crossed out the Quinn Sienna and wrote in the yellow orange I chose, which was Nickel Azo, one of my favorite paints, and went across from it and found that, okay, I'll use ultramarine blue instead of the cobalt blue. At least it's nice and intense, so um, I should be okay there. And then someone else said, but instead of the, can you substitute instead of the naphthamide maroon something else? I said, like what? Well, how about opera? Oh, I said, opera? Do you see opera in here? No, but you said, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> so I bowed to the wishes, which I love to do, um, of the, the members in the class, and I wrote in opera. There were my four colors. Nickel Azo, Ultramarine Turquoise, Ultramarine Blue, and Opera. I decided, well, what's the worst that could happen? And I plunged ahead into the painting. And I got into the painting quite a ways, and suddenly I saw that it has changed everything. My selection of colors has changed everything. And I stopped. And this still is one of my favorite paintings. Would I have come to this painting in using the other paints that I wanted to use? No, I wouldn't have. I could have come up with a beautiful painting. I'm not saying that. But this was absolutely exciting. Why? Because I was mixing from a limited palette, a tetradic palette, I was mixing paints that I'd never done before. It was fresh, and I created something I'm immensely, immensely proud of. Please know this. I'm old, but my web designer and techs are young and computer savvy, so they've developed all of the tutorials to work on every computer and e-reader device you may have, and all as an interactive experience, which basically means you get to choose how you wish to use them. I hope you enjoy these as much as I've enjoyed teaching and painting for all these years. Thank you for being a part of my life's work. Thank you.